so everybody knows I've done a lot of stuff with Dr. Nick Ruggiero, who's amazing. Uh, he does the Miami Dolphins for the Panthers. Outstanding as far as active release treatment. Uh, unfortunately, because of my schedule, his schedule has been very hard for me to see him. And in my comeback, um, you guys have, have known that I've been trying my best to get back into shape as fast as possible. I have a number of injuries, but the worst one is, and, you, and I have all these people that are like, oh, you gotta do more lateral raises. Look, I've been training for 25 years. I've done more lateral raises than any of you guys at, at, can even imagine at this point. I have literally dead muscles. My posterior delts don't fire anymore. So we're gonna do some experimental procedure today. Uh, it's new, this is new medicine, this is new age stuff. And um, the, I'll have the doctor explain it better, but what we're trying to do is get these posterior delts to actually fire again. Will it work? I don't know. Um, I do uh, support all this modern medicine and modern science, and if it does work, it's something I will stay consistent with. Do I expect to be better in one day? No, uh, but we're gonna go in, and uh, he knows that we're being uh, videotaping this, so he'll, he'll, uh, he'll explain it from the medical standpoint. Yesterday, I went in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I did an hour of cardio in the morning. Okay. And then, you know, a couple hours after that, I, I did a really hard workout. Okay. Pushed it. The hardest I've done on my back in a while. It felt great while I was doing it. Okay. Uh, but I still really wanted to donate blood because I haven't donated since July and my hematocrit was a little high. Okay. Um, and so I it's just, a win win. Yeah. Okay. And so I felt fine mm -hmm. last night. I, I probably, I, I, did, I did eat some red meat because I knew that I was doing any blood. Sure. Um, but I, I probably like didn't need to train as hard as that I did. So I woke up this morning. It's all right. I took four out this morning and I, I, I told Savannah before I left, I was like, you know what? I'm glad I'm going to get treatment right now. I said, because I can't even stand up straight. Yeah. She was like, you're that bad? And I, and I was like, yeah. It's one of those, I got hit by a truck. I was like, I really, even I feel it through my hips. I'm like, yeah. you know what? I, I don't know if my body is used to, because I've been so smart with form, yeah. I don't know if my body is just used to just being bent over and just yanking weight. I haven't done it in, in, in a long time. It's not. Look, you went from a heavy cardio month mm -hmm. to now you're getting back into weight training, doing it in a very smart way and sort of progressively loading and being very controlled with your movement and all of a sudden you feel like a badass one day and you want to get back to like just like power lifting type, mm -hmm. of, type of movements, right? Body's not used to it. That's that's plain and simple. That you, you know what you, you know your body. You know that. I didn't, I certainly didn't expect didn't expect to not be sore, but I'm more sore than I thought I was. Right, doing. right. Well, let's do this in the interest of us going straight from the dry kneeling of your shoulders into mm -hmm. you know basically doing some exercises with it. Let's start with the low back. Okay. We'll get that loosened up, and then we'll go into the the dry kneeling from there. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. All right. Go ahead and get face down for me. So is it all the way from your mid back down? Yeah, and, and there's nothing that is like hurting in a bad way. Mm -hmm. It's just really sore. Right. Yeah, there's nothing super restricted. Maybe right there mm -hmm. on both sides, but other than that. There's, I mean, the erector spinae, they're not, they haven't turned into rods or anything like that. Yeah. Even, even in my hips and glutes and stuff, a little bit. A little bit in there, yeah. Okay, let's do this. Let's get the table started, do a little ART in there, and yep. go from there, all right? Mm -hmm. I always tell people, if the pressure's too much, let me know, and I'll back off, but PJ doesn't feel pain, so mm -hmm. I can go to town on him. Unfortunately, <laughs> that is why I wind up getting myself into the situation, but right. myself in. I think I did a poor job hydrating yesterday. It was just a crazy day, and I. That's a perfect storm. You yeah. give blood, you don't hydrate, mm -hmm. you eat red meat, and then you hit the gym hard. So. 
inflammation, 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 lack of resources. It all adds up. Doing okay so far? Yes. Got a free T-shirt yesterday, so I'm, hey. I, I'm over a, <laughs> I'm over a gallon donated of, of red blood in the uh, past less than two years. I go pretty religiously um, every two months. How'd you get into it? Uh, part of it was um, just I spent a lot of time studying detoxifying the body mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, there's all these bullshit like detox teas and stuff that you see on Instagram. And one of the things that I, I had discussed with, I, I had a guy who was, I don't want to say that he was a mentor, but I guess he was a mentor when I was in college. Right. Who I always say to this day is, is he's, he's probably the most brilliant guy I've ever met that, you know, he was like a combination of, you know, somebody like Elaine Norton who's got a PhD in exercise physiology, somebody like me that can give you everything you possibly want to know about supplementation and nutrition. Sure. And, and, and really had a lot of actual like medical. Um, he had a, a customized degree from UConn. He actually helped write the book for the National Academy of Sports Medicine. And, and um, That'd be a good person to listen to. His big thing was this. There's two, ways, that, there's two ways on that side. Yep. His big thing was there's, there's, there's two ways that you can actually cleanse your body. So they're like straight? Uh, number one is just simply losing body fat because most of the toxins are stored in your fat. And I like that, right? Um, so by burning body fat and getting rid of fats, you have less bring potential. Your, bring your knee up towards your chest. Hold that knee there, drop the foot to the ground. Good, come on back up. Uh, and the other one is that he, he, he felt that there was a strong... Up, up, up. Foot down. Back. Yeah, part of it was that as you started going through the movements, glutes started to get fatigued. Mm -hmm. As the glutes start doing less, the back takes over, and you start pulling more from the back and helping out with the glutes. Good. Let's do one more. No, right there. Go ahead. Sure. Stretch the quad. Squeeze your glute right here. So, especially bodybuilders that are taking anabolic steroids and things like that, eating mm -hmm. excess amounts of protein, taking excess amounts of supplements, things like that. Right. Your your blood changes, and you know, to put it into layman terms, he was like, "Look, you're not going to run a car optimally on the same oil for ten years. For right. ten years. Right." Um, but by donating blood, yes, you're doing something to help save other people, but you're actually doing something positive for yourself because your, your blood changes the more toxins that you have in your body. Mm -hmm. And this is when you see like elevated hematocrit, elevated irons and metals in the mm -hmm. blood and your red blood cell count starts to change and the actual quality of your blood changes. And he said, think of it as you want your blood. Switch sides for me. To be, you want your heart to be able to, 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 to pulse your blood through your system almost like you're taking a turkey baster and just injecting a turkey with, with water and, 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 and pumping it through that turkey efficiently. He goes, mm -hmm. but imagine if you had to do the same thing with ragu meat sauce. Right. He's like, it's going to be a lot harder. Yeah. Red blood cells have, have a lifespan, mm -hmm. right? And... Could you decrease that lifespan a little bit so that the older red blood cells that don't have the same oxygen carrying capacity sort of, you know, get rid of them a little bit faster so that you can make sure you're staying more in that middle category? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But it's it's the same with the giving too much yep. that younger those younger blood cells also aren't very efficient. Mm -hmm. So what I what I found most interesting is by just wanting to see the actual numbers for themselves. I've, I've on probably now five occasions Come on up. done pre and post donation blood work. Mm -hmm. And every time without fail, 
my hematocrit has come back down into healthy range. The yeah. metals have come down, yeah. and you see these numbers go back into what was, is considered a healthy range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something uh, bleeding people back in the day, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's what medicine was was around, but it's it was basically you look back at those old texts and those, let's get rid of the toxins in the, in mm -hmm. the body, right? Now we're just scientifically figuring out, okay, how does that really work? Mm -hmm. Alright, come on up, shirt off. I'm gonna take a look at those shoulders. You can keep that on. Have a seat. Have you hit these the last couple of days? No. So I they're they're fresh. I'm I'm ready to you know, after we do the needling and stuff to go and okay. get them fired after. I mean, I, I'm sure they got a little stimulation when I was doing back yesterday, but no direct work. So obviously anterior delt, lateral delt, posterior delt, you see the definition here, you see the definition here, and then basically a lack of definition through, through the back. And like PJ said, he's basically hammered the living daylights out of those exercises, but nothing happens. And guess what? You can do them till kingdom come, but if they are not neurologically activated, you're not getting anything out of them. You're, the body's so good at compensating, and guess what? You're gonna start moving by, by using your triceps, by using your rhomboids, by using your, your traps. The most superior muscle is this huge muscle in your back called the trap. There's fibers that can actually take over some of the function of the deltoid. And in fact, when the deltoid shuts off, you start shrugging a lot more to get the same sort of effect. So what we have to do is basically get these deltoids to start communicating with the brain again so that when PJ goes through a certain movement, a, a pulling movement or, or a retraction, that the muscle will actually activate and he'll be able to utilize it. So go ahead and get face down for me. Now with dry needling in general, we're gonna be using the same needles as an acupuncturist would use during, during acupuncture. But here's the, here's the rub. Acupuncture is typically done very superficially. Dry needling is gonna go deep to where the muscular dysfunction typically lies. And often enough, I'm gonna be going into what we call a bony backdrop. So I'm gonna be looking for the scapula, I'm gonna be looking for the humerus as we get into these different areas of the shoulder. And so I understand the benefits of this, but let's let's talk to the, the viewers as if they have no clue why we're doing any of this. Why are we taking these needles, putting them where we're putting them? What is the range that we're trying to insert them? What are the needles actually made of? Right. And why are we doing this right so now? And, and why do we do... A lot of people have seen STEM done before, but why are we combining the STEM with the dry needling? Right. So... All those, let, let, let's start from the, from the beginning. Dry needling is basically an evolution of trigger point injections. If you are a candidate for trigger point, you're gonna want to maybe even try dry needling initially as well. You wanna try and get rid of that inhibition to the muscle movement so that you can gain more activation and more bottom line function at the end of the day. If you can do that, then you're gonna get more strength you're gonna get more range of motion overall, especially if you're in pain, you're gonna have less pain as well. So again, with these, I can ART, I can use ART, I can use Graston, I can use a variety of myofascial techniques to get rid of scar tissue, get rid of any hindrance to the muscle moving. But again, if that connection is not there between neurologically, between the brain and the muscle, if it's forgotten how to actually contract the muscle, you're not gonna get anything out of those muscles to, to, at the end of the day, even if there's no hindrance in the way in terms of any adhesive tissue. So, dry needling came along uh, when basically they, they sought out a way of activating these muscles neurologically so that you can gain more function at the end of the day. By placing the needles in the muscle, we're going to place two. Basically, we're going to have two poles. The, the stem unit I'm going to use, I'm going to have basically a ground on one, the, the unit on the other, and we're going to see a muscle contraction actually in the posterior delt as this happens. 
basically think of think of this as an interior stem whereas typically you put two pads over the skin and, and try and get the, the muscle to fire, this is gonna go deep right into the muscle to, to be able to gain that. Now, again, I'm gonna be looking for that bony backdrop as I put these into the muscle so that we can leave them in, it's nice and safe, the needles are not gonna move. So, superficial, like let's say as far as depth goes, if I just put these in superficially, I'm not really getting into the muscle. I'm just getting into the dermis, I may get into the fascia, but that's about it. So we want to be able to go in, palpate where that, where that posterior delt is, and basically put that needle right into it, especially if I can find a trigger point, go right into that trigger point as well. So a quick tap, and then control that needle going in. If there's any resistance to the needle going in, bend this a little bit, and use this as a guide. Doing okay? Yep. And this thing's so restricted. As sharp as these needles are, they don't want to go in. Alright, that's the bony backdrop right there. So that's number one. Needle doesn't want to go in. There's money back drop right there. All right, so let's get the sim going. Again, when I do this, I always tell people. I want this to go up to a certain amount in intensity, not pain. It's gonna be a kind of weird feeling of feeling the muscles contract. Sort of like muscle stim, but almost on the inside. Let me know when you start feeling something. Anything yet? Not yet. Okay. Starting to slightly feel it now. How's it feeling right now? Uh, very mildly feeling it now. Okay. To, there we go. Starting to get it more. Still mild, but starting to feel it now. You can see very small contractions right now. See how the shoulder, as soon as I let go, whole shoulder relaxes and we want to maintain this contraction. Basically what we're doing is reinforcing that connection, again, between the muscle and the brain, reminding the brain, hey, you're supposed to have control over this. Let's, let's get that muscle memory going so that we can activate this on demand rather than having to use an ex external influence like, like we're doing now to get that same effect. Not too intense? Nope. And timing on this varies. You know, sometimes it's as quick as 30 seconds, sometimes you wanna hold it for a few minutes to get a little bit more exaggerated of a, of a result. Um, again, it has to do sometimes with how chronic a situation is. If it's acute, you're gonna, it's kinda of gonna be in and out. If something's a little bit more chronic like it is in PJ's case, it could be a few minutes. Typically in a lot of dry needling cases, I get full resolution of the symptoms, meaning, okay, we have activation of the muscle after one treatment, about 90% of the time. The other 10% of the time, okay, we've got activation, but we could get a little bit more. Um, maybe the whole muscle isn't completely turned on. We have to do it a second time. Typically, when someone's a little bit more chronic, that's the case. Um, now, that's for one muscle. If a person has several muscles involved, you're gonna be doing a couple of dry needling sessions uh, just to make sure we can get all the muscles on the same page. But in a muscle as complex as the shoulder, you really want to make sure that you want the whole shoulder is balanced, right? It's basically an equation. The anterior muscles, lateral muscles, posterior muscles, um, abductors, adductors, re retractors, flexors, 
there's a lot that has to be balanced. So if all of a sudden you have a few muscles that aren't on board, everything starts to compensate. That whole equation is imbalanced. So it's, it's really all about gaining function across the board. Good job. Let's take this one out. And good. So almost never any blood with this. I'm still gonna put a little bit of pressure in here. That's just gonna help with this soreness after the treatment. Let me go ahead and toss these and we'll get into the right shoulder. You all right, PJ? Mm -hmm. So guys, people are always, in a, in a bodybuilding sense, people are always like, you know, what can I do to increase my mind-muscle connection? We hear this all the time. This goes all the way back to when Arnold was training. And you have to think about it. Neurologically, your brain is the master computer for what is like an electrical circuit board, right? Like when you when you watch old videos of the way that phones used to work, and a woman would put one plug in and transfer this call, you know, to somebody by by taking another plug and inserting it into the next part of the circuit board. Well, if your brain is 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 telling the muscle to do that, but the muscle simply the circuit can't can't transfer you're not going to get any connection. And so in my case, you, you've, you've literally got a dead circuit. And so what we're trying to do is, is make it possible for that mind-muscle connection to work again. Now I know the proper form for the exercises. I know what I need to do, but if the muscle can't, literally can't activate, then I, then I can't get anything, anything positive done. So, we're, we're trying to wake these muscles up and we're trying we're trying to get them to activate again and, and, and they're in essence they're dead now I could feel what he was doing I could feel the stimulation and I could feel no pain it, it, it actually it kind of feels good to be honest with you These muscles are so rigid, so tight, that it's taking a good amount of force to be able to get these needles in as deep as they need to go. And again, PJ does have a high pain tolerance, but these needles are so thin. Again, you know, like PJ was saying, he's giving blood. You go and give blood, the, the thinnest needle that you can get is a butterfly needle. These needles are one-fifth the thickness of those butterfly needles, the needles that they use for kids. So people say, okay, I'm going to feel that first pinch of the needle going in, and then they have no idea how deep that we go during the course of the treatment. How long are these needles? The ones I'm using right now are a little bit longer. I want to make sure that we weren't going to shortchange you. Mm -hmm. The ones I have right now are about three inches long. Mm -hmm. um, let's say I was working on your glute, I'd be using some four to five inch needles and those will probably go all the way in because mm -hmm. again that bony backdrop is going to be pretty deep in there. Because we're going to go all the way down to the iliacus when we're dealing like let's, let's say with the glute med or the piriformis. Same thing on this side. Much quicker. What's the intensity there? Um, I feel a little bit. Um, it's, it's mild, but I am feeling it faster on this side. Okay. And that may give us a little indication of which one's actually worse. The, the right may actually be a little bit better than, than the left one is. Mm -hmm. You can see again, the contraction as I let go and go back to the needle. Good 
Doing alright? Yep. Good. And this can be done throughout the body. Um, initially in our training, we go over everywhere in the body that does not include the lungs because guess what? When you have a new person that's needling, you don't really want them to go anywhere near the lungs because needles and balloons don't really mix. After you do it for a while, then you're invited back to the sort of second training where they go over the, more of the thoracic spine and how to needle the chest and, and areas like that. And once you have a little bit more experience, a little bit more feel, and with that knowledge, this can be done all the way head to toe. Anything that's, that's going on that seems to be shut down, that's not responding to typical um, either PT, chiro, massage, acupuncture, this would be a good alternative to those. And I don't think we'll have to do this one as long since it responded so much more quickly. Yeah, this one I felt right away for, for sure. And again, it's not hurting, it actually feels good. Mm -hmm. And again, those of you out there that have had good experiences with electrical muscle stimulation, TENS, uh, Russian stim, just imagine how much more effective it can be when we're getting that electrical stimulation directly into the muscle to create that contraction. Good job. Number one, number two. Again, good little red effect in there. A little bit of pressure just to decrease the amount of soreness he's going to have. All right, and that's it. PJ, come on up. Let's head back. Let's test those things out. how much he wants to get his whole scapula involved instead of just driving from here. But at least now, you're seeing that that posterior delt is actually engaging. Now we've gone from it being an issue of, is the posterior delt actually turning on, to yeah, it's on, but it's really weak because it just hasn't engaged in a really long time. And, and this is truly harder than it should be. It's just, my body wants to cheat everywhere else because there's so much weakness. Imagine, as much as he's worked out, these muscles basically have been shut down for such, such a long period of time that it's like he's he's a newbie with, with his posterior delts. It's starting from scratch. So it's developing that good muscle memory where he's gonna slowly be able to re-engage the, the delt without compensating like he is used to. You can see I'm actually concentrating so hard I'm trying to get that muscle to work that it, it's actually really difficult for me. But I do actually feel it. Good. And it's, it's contracting when you're actually going through the movement. So that's step one. Now the biggest question that I have is, so we do this today, going forward, will the muscles stay awake or will we have to keep on? No, the muscle is on. There's not gonna be any sort of reset, like it turning off, it's not. You're gonna continue to compensate, which is why you wanna still do these isolated movements to to reinforce what we've done today, mm -hmm. but there, uh, unless, God forbid, you get hurt in the next week, there's not gonna be any sort of deactivation of the muscle just arbitrarily. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not like an adjustment where you're gonna feel good for a little bit and all of a sudden, okay, I gotta go back for my next adjustment and you know, keep ma maintaining it. Once it's on, it's on. This is like flipping a switch. Awesome, well, um, I think that people will learn a lot from this video, this is okay. why I wanna do this. Um, and hopefully, as uh, my body fat gets lower, we'll actually be able to see more development come back 
in my posterior delts and I won't have that, you know, kind of sloped look to the front because there's nothing going on in the back. But what we did today, I felt quite a bit. Awesome. And um, I'm excited about this, the stuff that I believe in, I believe in the science behind it. It's a matter of now practically applying it and getting it to happen. But I, I can tell you that for me, there's so much weakness there. It's something as simple as just, you know, activating the muscle with this, this cable you think I'd be able to do easily is actually very challenging. And that's a 13 pound band. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very, I mean, I, I broke a sweat just doing <laughs> 10 reps, so. Um, very cool, it's very, very interesting. Um, thank you for allowing us to video. Absolutely. Really, I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we can get these things to uh, come back. Sweet. Glad I didn't have to take my shirt off on camera today. <laughs> so, thank, All you. Right, guys. thank you. Thank you, guys.